Hey everybody, it's Matt with TFT Gear. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the X32 Compact. So recently I got hired to replace the PA system in a church building. Now the building was used by many churches, many different groups um, that have live music. Uh, so they needed something powerful, something flexible. Uh, they don't have a ton of inputs on the stage, so it didn't need to be huge. And also the front of house space where they run sound is fairly small. So it needed to be powerful, flexible, uh, usable by multiple different groups and have a small footprint. So for that, I got the X32 Compact. For the price range, there's really no beating it. Um, they asked for some training. I, I trained several of them, but I thought this would be a really good opportunity to not only train them, uh, put something online for them to watch, but also for anybody on the internet who wants some, you know, fairly fundamental um, instruction on the X32 Compact or on X32 in general. So really quick, we're going to do a, a tour of the board. Um, so first, you'll notice. There are two banks of faders right here. So the left bank of eight is used for the inputs mainly, uh, also other things. The right is used for uh, DCA bus outputs and your matrix outputs. So the X32 compact as well as the regular does have 32 inputs. But of course this bank only has eight faders. So you know if you're not familiar with digital boards, you may be saying, well, how does that happen? Well, on digital boards, you'll be pushing a lot of buttons. So on the left side here, that's how you flip the faders to the inputs that you want. So one through eight is on the first button, nine through 16, 17 through 24, and then 25 through 32. Now the X32 Compact only has 16 inputs on the board itself. The other 16 I have programmed uh, to come from the Digital Snake, which you do have to buy separately. Um, but we got one, I got it installed side stage. And so one through 16 are coming from the Digital Snake. And then I have 17 through 32 coming on the back. So this mic I have plugged into number one on the back, which like I just said is actually number 17. So if I wanted to look at this microphone, I'd pull up, uh, I'd push the third button, right, which is the 17 through 24. Here you can see the meter on this channel moving. Also, all the, the faders are, are digitally, digitally controlled. So, you know, you can change it on one bank and then go to the next one. Everything goes back to where you have it, right? So, on each channel, you have a select button, a solo, and a mute. Now, I hope you know what solo and mute does, but I mean, mute is obvious. Uh, solo, you would push it, and then it would come up in your headphones for you to just listen to that channel. Um, a lot of times when I'm running sound, I'm, I'm running sound with like eight stereo channels of synth, and I never know what's, what's coming from where. So that's a great use for the solo button. And then unique to digital boards is the select button. So up top, you have what's referred to as the fat channel. It's basically the channel strip for every channel. And it only applies to the channel that you have selected. So when you want to manipulate a channel, a microphone, an input, whichever, uh, you just select it. So if I wanted to turn up, you know, channel 18, I don't really want to mess with 17 right now because that's what I'm on. Um, I would select 18 and then up top, I have my gain, right? Next to it, I have a low cut, which I can actually do that on channel 17. And really quick, the great thing about this board that I really like is you'll notice in each section, there's a, a smaller button that says view on it. Uh, and that's great because it gives you reference to whatever you're manipulating uh, with the touch of a button it brings it right up on that screen so if i wanted to see my low cut you could push the view button i actually like to view it on the eq push the on button and now you can see it here cutting the low end out of this microphone i'll turn it off 
Here we have gating and compression. Um, and we have a four band fully parametric EQ. Now this is awesome for anyone that's mixed for any length of time on uh, an analog board, having 32 plus channels of four band fully parametric plus gating compression is amazing. You used to have racks and racks of outboard gear to do what this is doing. Um, so on the, the EQ, you have, there's a little bit of a, a high boost on there. You just select what band you want. You have the different cue controls here. You can do a shelf, you can do a sharp cue or a wide cue, uh, and you can do a high and low cut as well. I'm um, gonna turn that one off. And then I'm gonna go over to the second bank of faders real quick. Uh, so like I said, this is the DCAs, the bus outputs, and the matrix outputs. Uh, if you don't know what a DCA is, it's a digitally controlled amplifier. Um, in the analog world, it was a VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. It operates kind of like a, a subgroup, um, except you know, a little bit different. I'm not going to get into the intricacies of that right now, but for most intents and purposes, it's going to be uh, a subgroup. So if you want to assign something to that subgroup, it's very simple. You hold the select button and then you just select what channels you want. Now I have those three channels selected on that subgroup. If I want those three channels to come out of my mains, I obviously have to have that fader up. If I have these faders up on the input side and the DCA side down, then nothing's going to come out, obviously. And if I want to take it off, same way. All right, and then you have your bus outputs here. And like I said, your matrix. Um, on the right side, here you have soft keys. These are software assigned buttons, so you can make them do whatever you want. You can see here, uh, these are flashing. That's because I have them assigned as the tap tempo for the echo. So if I wanna change the uh, echo timing, I can tap it, and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. Uh, and that will actually change the timing on the echo. And then down here I have mute groups. Uh, currently, the only thing I have assigned is actually my effects sends um, or my, my bus outs on, uh, on my effects because um, if someone's singing a song, there's a lot of echo, a lot of reverb, everything's beautiful, and then the song's over, they wanna start talking, uh, you just hit the mute group and then it will mute all of those at the same time. You can see here. Oh, there we go. You can see here, it mutes all four of those sends at the same time. And I like to mute the sends because if you mute the return on the effects, then all of a sudden this long reverb tail or something just cuts off and it sounds awkward. Now let's talk about scenes. Like I said, this building is used by multiple different groups, mul multiple different churches. And so one of the most important things uh, when a digital board is being used by multiple different uh, groups or in different scenarios is learning the scenes. Uh, now this is the, the recall or the saving of every setting on the board. So if you like your vocals set, the first eight, and you have perfect EQ and compression and everything set on those eight channels, the next group comes in, they like their drums on one through eight, they completely change everything. You need to be able to recall everything, all the changes that you made uh, quickly so that you can get on to producing your show or, or doing the, the service or whatever you're doing. And luckily with digital boards, it, they make it super easy to do that. So I'm gonna show you how. There's a section over here, the scene section. Like I said earlier, the view button is awesome. I love it. So it's gonna bring you up to the home and you'll just page over to the right where it says scenes. Now I only have one scene saved, it's called church. I encourage all the other churches that are using this to create their own. And you do that by going to an empty box right here and then save, you can push this knob down. It's also a button. Say save, it'll bring you up to this prompt uh, and it'll let you name it, whatever you want. So I'm gonna say 
A. I am Church A. Okay. Save that. It's going to say, are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Okay. Now everything you have on there is saved. So let's say you're done. You wrap up. The next people come in after you and, you know, they do... I don't know, just something crazy. You don't know what those people are doing. They're just putting faders any old way. All right, there you go. <clears throat> now, the next time you come in, you see it, and uh, let's just put it to the, the EQ on the screen. <clears throat> you see it like this, and you're like, well, that's not how I left it. I don't like it like this. I'm going to recall my scene. So you, again, go to the View button on the Scene section, and then you'll go to A, you'll select A, uh, because I am Church A again, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, just hit the go button. It'll say, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure I want my scene back. There you go. And now everything is exactly how you left it. All right, now let's talk about mix buses or bus sends. On an analog board, you'd probably know this as an aux send. This is how you would send a signal to a monitor output or an effects. Anything you need to send a signal to, you would go through a bus output. So over here on this side, you can see bus output 1 through 8 and 9 through 16. Now it's also on this side as well, if you'd like to keep your fader up, which I'm going to do for this demonstration and then keep the bus outputs over here. Now in this venue, they have two monitor feeds. So I have one and two up right here. Um, if I want to send this microphone to these monitor outputs, then I select it. Then I go up here to my mix bus button, the view, it brings it up right here on the monitor. This first knob selects the mix buses in groups of four. So by default, it brings up one through four. And then these four knobs select how much you're sending to that output. So if I wanted to bring this mic up in mix one or in monitor one, I would just turn this knob up. Hey, hey, you can see it right here starting to come up in that monitor. Same thing with two. Hey, one, two, one, two. Now I'm sending it to monitors one and two, just like that. Fairly simple. Now, if I want effects, I have my effects on 13 through 16 here. They're mono sends, uh, but they do have stereo returns. So just like in analog world, if you send a, a signal to an effects unit that's outboard, you're also going to have a return. So you're going to have to turn the return up as well. So if I want to send this vocal to, let's just say, a, uh, a reverb or an echo. I'll show you how to do that. I'm actually going to put my headphones on real quick so that I can hear what I'm doing. All right, let's get some nice effects going on here. Like I said earlier, I have my mute group on my effects sends. You can see that these outputs are muted. So if I push this mute group, hey, 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 hey. hey. So I already had a little bit going to that echo. So I'm going to take this first knob all the way over to the right, which selects the last four, which is my effects. And I'm going to turn it down for now. There you go. You can see now I'm not sending to any effect. Unmute these. Let's, uh, let's bring that echo back up. Check. Hey, 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 hey. remember earlier, I told you these soft keys over here, which are software defined keys, they do whatever you want. I have them assigned to the, the echo tap tempo. So if I unmute, hey, 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 hey. Check. 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 check, check. You see, you can control the tap tempo or the, the timing of your echo really easy, really quickly, just by tapping one button. Now, like I said, with effects, you are going to have to also have them on a return. So the returns are right here. I'm going to unmute it again. Hey. 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 Check. 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 So not only do you have to have the bus outputs 
up or the sends, but you also have to have the returns up on effects if you want to hear it. Now, if you don't want to go through the mix bus menu up here, maybe you're trying to get someone's monitor mix done quickly and send a lot of things to it without having to select each one, you do have another way to do mix buses, and that's with sends on fader. You have a button right here, it says sends on fader. That will turn all of your faders um, into outputs for the mix bus rather than the main bus. So I'm gonna select sends on fader. The mix bus I want is 15 because that's where my echo is, right? So I'm gonna select 15. Now over here, you see that my mic channel went down, right? Because it's no longer the level going out of the mains, it's the level going to that mix bus. So if I wanna just send a whole bunch of stuff really quick to that echo, I could just do this. Hey. 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 Check. 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 Hey. There you go. So if you're trying to get somebody's monitor, like I said, monitor feed one, I want this vocal, I want these instruments, um, go over here, yeah, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, there you go. You can get one or two wedge mixes done super quick without having to select each input. Now one of the last features that I'm going to talk about today is the USB functionality. It's something that's great about digital boards in general, but specifically with this board, it's super easy. Again, with that magical view button, right up here is your uh, USB section. I have an external hard drive plugged into it. Just hit the view, it brings up this tape deck. Uh, there's probably a lot of people out there watching this that don't know what a tape deck is. Well, this is kind of what it looked like. It didn't work quite as well, but here you have you know, stop, play, your basic functions, rewind, etc., and then the record button. That's how I'm recording this right now, just through the board onto my external hard drive. A lot of churches, in fact, I'd say most churches nowadays, are trying to, to put their sermons up for people to listen to, maybe podcast out there, and this makes it super easy. Just right as you're about to start, hit the record button. When you're done, hit the stop button, you have to wait for it to finish finalizing, wait till the light turns off, and then you pull it out, put it on the cloud, and you're done.